Thank you. Okay, so that's Deepak Fertilizer's got a lot of good data from there. Uh, so let's do one thing, let's move on. Uh, Ashok Leland gave us some positive commentary and we now have the management of M&M joining in. Very strong Q2 earnings above what the street was expecting. Revenue saw near 60% rise. Margins were steady as well. Rajesh Jajurikar, the executive director of the auto and the farm sector, joins us now. Uh, Mr. Jajurikar, how is the demand trend looking like at the moment? Q2 was strong, but you had the low base as well. What's the steady state growth for the auto segment in the second half of the year? Yeah, so uh, demand uh, continues to be very strong and robust uh, for our products. We've uh, done very well in the SUV space where we have over the last few quarters been number one on the SUV revenue market share. Also, the tractors we've done very well. We've gained uh, YTD October uh, market share of 0.8% market share. So demand and our product portfolios are you know, creating its impact in the market. So it's strong on the demand front, but also a very good uh, performance in the auto and farm business from a profit growth. And uh, the auto profits have grown four times last quarter to this quarter, that is Q2, F22, Q2 this year. And overall EBITDA for M&M standalone has grown 50% to 2,496 crores. So, you know, strong on demand, but also very strong on uh, profit growth. Okay, all right. Hi, uh, Mr. Jajurikar. Well, give us a sense on margins. Margins in the farm equipment segment, well, they've contracted. Are you still facing pressure in the tractor segment? And what's the steady state margins that we can expect for FY23? Yeah, so margins actually in the farm segment, if you look at it sequentially, which is quarter four F22 to quarter one F23 to now quarter two F23, sequentially margins have grown across the three quarters, uh, which uh, is a function of multiple things, including some softening that we are seeing in the commodity cycle. Uh, obviously, the, if when you compare it with quarter two of last year and this quarter, uh, the last year didn't have have this last leg of commodity inflation that we've seen. In the tractor business, because it is a reasonably high margin business, every time there's a commodity increase, we are in our attempt to pass on the cost increase. We are not at the moment even able to fully pass on the cost increase, but we certainly can't pass on the margin on the cost. And that has an impact on the margin and the, uh, you know, the numerator, numerator denominator effect, as we call it, which is loss of margin because you didn't pass on the margin on the cost increase. So the farm equipment business does see some of that as well in the current inflationary context. Mm. Uh, Mr. Jajurki, good morning. Uh, you know, what's the growth for the tractor industry? You said that year to date for tractors, you've gained market share by about uh, just under 1%. Uh, but uh, on growth, would you stick to your guidance of 5% for F523? Uh, so we expect the full year to be at around uh, a little over five percent uh, for the tractor industry. Now that is because the second half last year was on a higher base. Last year, first half had the advantage of a low base of quarter one of the previous year, which was a COVID impacted year. Uh, but as things look right now, going ahead from here, even though the festival season has been good. Uh, we believe that we will end the year a little above 5%, but on the upside, it can go up to about 6.5%. So the range in our mind for growth for the industry for the year, 5 and 6.5%. And okay, so tractor industry growth could be 5 to 6.5% for the full year. Got that. Is the semiconductor shortage over for the auto sector now? And since you are raising capacities for the SUV segment because of strong demand, what do you see as a growth there? Like you said, you know, the worst on the semiconductors is behind us. But that being said, uh, semiconductors will be something which has to be closely tracked and managed uh, over the next few quarters. And that's something we, that we do, uh, you know, stay focused on. We also shared that we are going to be significantly increasing our capacities in the SUV side. So in Jan, March of uh, current calendar year, we had a capacity of about 29,000 SUVs per month which uh, will go up in the 23 calendar Jan March to 39 and in the 24 calendar Jan March to 49. So in a way, we see significant increases in capacity happening over this two-year period. And we've already started and uh, allocated the capital to make this happen. All right, well, final question then. What's the SUV segment launch pipeline looking like? 
say over the next six to around 12 months? So firstly, you know, our portfolio right now is fairly, is fairly, is a new portfolio in, the, in many ways. So we have uh, the Scorpio N, which is completely new. We have the SUV 7 and the Thar. On Thar, we expect to see more varieties coming out over the next uh, couple of quarters. Uh, so there will be some excitement around that. The XUV 300 is also not a very old product. And then Bolero Neo is a you know, product that we launched uh, recently as well. So it's actually a fairly new uh, portfolio. What's interesting, though, is you know we've refreshed and relaunched the iconic Scorpio as Scorpio Classic. And that has got tremendous momentum, which just goes to show that even in the auto SUV space, a strong, iconic brand continues to have a space of, uh, you know, uh, loyalists and followers uh, who are very passionate about those brands. We've seen that in Bolero and Bolero Neo continuing, uh, which does close to 9,000 a month. And now we're seeing that even with Scorpio Classic, uh, which is getting bookings of more than 8,000, 9,000 a month as we've launched it uh, towards the end of uh, July. So again, you know, what, what I'm saying is, while it's good to have new, there's a lot of value to what we already have as strong, iconic products and brands. That context, the new five-door Thar that's launching in 2023, that's the next big one, right, that everyone's looking forward to. At least I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so great brands and some refreshers be coming up from the m and uh, vertical over the next one to two years. And of course, very good numbers. Let's slip into a quick break. On the other side, we'll connect with the managements of InfoEdge and Patanjali Foods to discuss the